Good evening, colleagues. Thank you so much for joining us today on this uh, webinar regarding digitalization of quality management system. And we're happy to have you here. I'm absolutely thrilled uh, to be hosting together with Anna. And just once again, all attendees will be muted, but please um, use the chat function and ask any questions. We'll respond to them after the presentation. And the webinar will be recorded. Uh, and we actually starting uh, already right now. So my name is uh, Evgenia mikalchuk Rablik, and I've been 15 years in clinical research and hosted 100 plus uh, external audits as a designee to head quality management in a global CRO, and seven years in e clinical in various uh, managerial positions. And actually, most of these 15 years in clinical research, I've been working together with Anna Petrovskaya, uh, who is uh, our QA director at Flex Databases, an absolutely amazing um, QA specialist. And she oversees a global QA in our international software as a service, a clinical company, Flex Databases. She participated in digitalization as well as, of course, validation in uh, 50 plus. Uh, companies from small ones like 10, 15 people to uh, 50,000 people in the US, Europe, and Asia. And of course, Anna is also an amazing RQA speaker. So, Anna, you can uh, steal, steal the floor. Thank you, Evgenia. Each time you tell all these words, I'm so very proud of myself. Thank you very much. And uh, well, we are happy to welcome everyone today to our webinar. And by the way, I've seen some of my beloved colleagues who joined us today. We've met with you during different audits for like several times with some of you. And uh, glad to see you today and uh, happy to you know get acquainted with um, everyone who finds time to join us today. And we are going to discuss um, our quality management system and if it is worth digitalizing at all or not. Some spoiler it is. And um, like on the menu today, we have uh, the following question. So how to make our quality management system digitalized and what for? And if we make it digital, uh, can we still be compliant with all the applicable regulations and standards? And are we going to have the same high quality according to our standards and applicable regulations and guidelines? If we streamline our work, are we going to waste any resources or are we going to save them? So, and I believe before we start answering these questions, Maybe we have some questions to our visitors absolutely. today. Yeah, absolutely. Let's just make sure that we all here and engaged. And let's start with a very quick poll on whether you've already digitali digitalized your quality management system. So please feel free to choose one answer, whether you're already there, maybe partially there, or not yet. Okay, so we'll just give maybe just a little bit more time for everyone who wants to participate to participate, and then we'll we'll share the results. So uh, stay with us, and the more people answer, the more interesting it gets, as always with the statistics, of course. Okay, so I think that most of the people who wanted to share probably already did. Anna, by the way, you can participate as well. I allowed panelists to participate. <laughs> okay, great. We'll take my chance. Okay. So I will uh, then end the poll right now and we'll see the results. Okay. So Anna, can you see them? Okay. So we actually have uh, someone, is it, is it you who, who digitalized already everything? <laughs> This will be uh, my secret. <laughs> okay, so you'll keep it to yourself. Got it. Okay, so we have a lot of people who already partially digitalized. That is that is really great. And uh, some of them not yet, like a third of everyone. And that one person who already did all of it. So that'd be interesting, actually, to 
uh, for you to share uh, in the chat your experience with it. Okay, so thank you so much for participating. We see that you are with us and engaged. And then, uh, Anna, back to you. Okay, thank you, Evgenia. And yes, like we've been all there. We've all done that. And even that one lucky person who has already digitalized the quality management system, I believe that still bears in mind how it was all before. And for those who are like not yet, digital we are still with the papers and well a bit of personal uh reminiscences when i started my way in quality assurance kind of more than 15 years ago being the quality assurance assistant i was the one responsible for signatures collection and i still remember uh that very challenging quest when you have one single page to be signed by 12 different people located in different offices and each endeavor has to use the same blue ink pen and so on and so forth and follow the same data format you know that so um it, it is challenging and it is not really that interesting as it might seem to be and more than that we all remember the golden rule of good clinical practice that's something that is not documented, has never happened. That is why the amount of documents always only increases. Each every new day brings us some new papers that are to be stored somewhere, especially in quality assurance. We love all the papers, all the notes, the files, and all the forms for sure. And we have to take responsibility for those documents, make sure that nothing happens to them in case of any disaster. We have our disaster recovery plans. We have our access rights, right? So that we make our quality management system documents strictly confidential and so on and so forth. So it really makes our life a bit complicated from time to time, though I'm sure that everyone who is involved in the quality assurance enjoys each and every routine uh, but still so we can somehow change the life if we have all the documents in one place and if we can easily get access to them and so i'm not going to tell you a lot about like database application that has different modules to offer it to cover all the processes in biotech pharmaceutical companies and CROs but our point of interest for today is quality management system and this system really is able to provide us assistance um, to get rid of the papers and to have all our processes in one place smooth and transparent so once we switch to computerized system to deal with our quality management documents and processes. We have in one place all the audits, all the incidents are managed in the system. Uh, CAPA management is also here, and uh, the same goes, in fact, to all GCP and GMP and like pharma related activities and processes. And um, my task for today is to show that um, it is quite easy in fact organized and um, once we have everything in one place we are really going to not to waste our resources but to save them and well speaking about the quality assurance um, i believe that we might start with the incident management process like you see so um once we decide that the incident is to be reported, we have to grant access to everyone, to each and every employee in the company, so that each and every incident is reported as soon as possible, once it happens. That is why still um, we at Flex Databases suppose that the incident management tool uh, can be available to everyone. Again, it can be configured uh, according to your needs and preferences and to your standard declaration procedures. But let's see that once an incident is detected by any employee in any company office, the incident is reported in the system and the system starts keeping track of what is happening. So the system allows us 
to enter the information regarding what happened, when it happened, and what we are going to do with it. For sure, at the very first step, we might not have all the information necessary to complete all the fields. That is why not all the fields can be obligatory at this point. So our favorite incident assessment, it is quite a standard one, right? Like let this one be of low urgency for today. Nothing critical is going to happen. We have uh, the field to schedule the time to correct our problems or to implement the changes. We have the necessary field to attach the documents confirming the incident, maybe some screenshots, maybe some pictures, maybe some reports or whatever. And we have the ready documents created strictly in the system. If any changes are required, we can manually edit the documents right here in the system by adding the necessary information. And after that, we are going to send the documents for further processing just here inside the system. We are choosing the person who is going to review our initial incident report that might be the functional manager, that might be the line manager, that might be the responsible employee, whoever, according to your standard process. And what we are doing, we are sending the incident report for review. The one who is assigned as the reviewer is going to receive it immediately in the system and getting the notification by email. So we are sure that nothing is going to be missed. And the standard workflow is as follows. After the incident is reviewed by the responsible reviewer, it is then sent for quality assurance that no incident can be you know, reported without quality assurance team, for sure. Uh, again, um, like once the reviewer is looking into the initially completed form, there are different options to proceed. Either to ask for some clarification, to add, to ask to add some additional details, either to decide that it is not an incident at all, this is my favorite part, either to well, take it, approve it, and send for further quality assurance review. The form can be edited at this tab and sent back and forth as many times as it is required and we still work with one and the same document, with one and the same form. So we don't have a lot of drafts, interact changes, or different versions of the document. Everything is stored in the system together with the attachment. And let me assure you that everything that happens to the document is captured in the audit trail as well. So what happens next? After the incident is sent, for the quality assurance review. You see, the quality assurance function, or quality assurance team has to make the decision either the couple is required or not, and if yes, so we have to proceed, and again, we are going to proceed within the system. So maybe some clarification is required. In this case, uh, the incident reporter or the previous reviewer will have the possibility to add any required details, dates, supporting documents, or whatever. And um, once the incident has been reviewed and approved, and approved by quality assurance function, it is all tracked in the system, and it is added into your further statistics. And once you need, during your audit inspections or your quality managerial meetings, you are going to provide the statistics regarding all the incidents that what reported and the outcome and the corrective and preventive actions taken and the root cause as well. So I believe that uh, there is quite a good option uh, to substitute all the trackers, all the spreadsheets that uh, you know manually maintained throughout different processes in the company. Uh, once we are done with an incident reporting, and we decide that the copy is required. So we can say that all the information from the incident report will be automatically transferred to the copy form. And in fact, I have something to show you regarding the copy management process. Well, it's not going to be 
connected to the incident right now as we have to see it from some other point of view. Okay, let's have the situation that we conducted the internal audit. And as a result of the audit, we have to prepare the couple form. So it was, let us say, it was the project specific audit and an internal one. So we are going to provide the copper and um, like track all the observations and the grading in this form. And after that, uh, let's see how we are going to send this copper to the copper implementer. So the flow is pretty much the same as it was with the incident reporting. Like we follow the same workflow. We have the fields that we are filling in within the system. And you see definitely different regulated companies have different standard document forms, different templates, and they are easily configured in the system. So you are welcome to use the one you prefer. But by like the default setting is that we are going to have the following observation grading, and um, we are entering all the necessary information. And after that, once we have completed the couple form, we are signing it electronically within the system and sending it to the couple implementer. And I would say that this is one more advantage of keeping all the documents within one computerized system. And you are sure that the, in this case, the COP implementer is going to receive the notification with the deadline. And this system is going to remind and to send the reminders both to the COP author and to the COP implementer so that nothing is skipped, so that all the corrective and preventive actions are taken in time, and so that um, we are sure that the COPPA form is finalized as it, is, as it was planned. So the workflow is quite simple. We have to plan the corrective and preventive actions. We have to approve them. And after that, we have to follow up on them, either they have been completed or not, and to make sure that they were effective and enough. So as the main idea of each and every couple is not only to document what went wrong, but to make it never happen again, right? So this is the standard copper template available in the system. So it consists of several modules. The first one just describe what went wrong. The next one capture the corrective and preventive actions and their deadlines. And after that, we sign the form. Again, we sign it electronically within the system following the validated electronic signature workflow to make sure that all the documents are followed up and stored within the system. And um, we can attach any document evidence that the corrective and preventive actions have been taken and so on and so forth. So, here is how it looks like. And once we assign the observation period for our COPPA form, the system will send us the reminder saying that it's high time to make sure that the actions taken have been effective and enough. And we are going to never have this observation in future again. So that is quite easy. And I would say that this helped us to get rid of all the trackers that are manually captured and maintained, like all this Excel sheets, you know what I'm telling about. So uh, that was about the copper, that was about the incident. So um, I've shown to you how the computerized system can help us to keep track of everything that needs to be reported and to have the statistics regarding all the incidents, all the observations within the mouse click, you know. Yeah. Like, but we have lots of other processes in our quality management routine, and uh, one of the major parts are the audits. And, well, we all know how it is usually done. So we have to plan the audit. We have to find the suitable days 
we have to contact the auditees and discuss the audit plan and review the audit plan draft and so on and so forth. So it takes quite a lot of time, and especially in clinical trials where everyone is always on a business trip. So we have to find time and place to read the document, to agree the date, and so on and so forth. And here we have everything in one system. We have our beautiful calendar. We have the possibility to plan the audit within the system and send the proposed date to the ODT. Again, within the system, the ODT receives notification that some happy news for you, the audit is planned. Uh, let's have it in those days. And after that, everything is done within the same workflow. So we are drafting the audit plan. We are reviewing and approving it. We are sending it to our ODT within the system. And once the dates are here, so we are still receiving the reminder from the system that it's high, high time to finalize the audit plan, or tomorrow you are having the audit, or it's high time to finalize the audit report, and so on and so forth. And everyone who is involved into the audit process is getting all the notifications and all the documents within the system, signing them electronically within the system. And after that, all the documents are stored, again, in one place with the restricted access, with the controlled access, and everything is proven by the audit trail. No more spreadsheets anymore, right? So the um, configurable workflow that allows us to adjust the system to our process, to our SOPs, and to have all the data all the way through in one place. By the way, once the audit report is prepared, uh, we have shown to you already that all the information from the audit report, all the necessary information, may be transferred to the COPPA, and the COPPA will be sent within the system to the COPPA implementer to provide their answer, the root cause analysis, and so on and so forth. So I believe that um, it's quite easy to prove that once we have entered the information into one place, it is now available throughout the system to be used in different documents and different processes. And we not only save our resources, but we are showing the data integrity. So we currently know that all our documents use the same data. So data integrity is our priority in such processes. The same goes to the quality management system documents. So once you don't have to create the document somewhere in some different system or you have one document which is available in the system, you create it, you draft it, you review it, you have all the comments integrated, incorporated into one document, you are able to work with the documents simultaneously. And after that, you finalize it here in the system and Thanks to connection with learning management system, the document is published and is made available to the employees. So we are sure that our employees get access only to the currently effective versions of the documents and templates. And we are assigning the trainings and we have the audit report. And that is why we are always ready for any audit, for any inspection, as we have the training history report, we have the published effective quality management system documents, and we have the historical part. So we, the system still keeps track of everything that happened in the system, right? So we are always able to show how it was all changed and updated. And once we start speaking about the changes, I can't but, but mention the change control, which is crucially important uh, for GMP processes, uh, we have to keep track of everything that changes. And that is why you can use the quality management system for as well. As computerized system keeps all the information in one place. And we, step by step, we are working with the change, starting from initiation up to review and approve within the system. After that, 
any training if available is assigned in the system. We track the implementation. And after that, we have enough statistics for implement for evaluation of the change implemented. So we have the version control. We have everything tracked in the system. And once we get rid of any other documents and records, once we have it in one set of information, we are transparent, smooth and clear for our management, for our quality assurance team, for our clients, inspectors, auditors, and whoever would like to, we would like to grant access to or to provide the evidence of how it all works. And here, I kind of went, but mentioned the report. So it's really very, I would say, convenient to have all the documents within one system. It's very good to have all the statistics in one system, but the most beautiful and important part is the access to that information that is kept in the system and tracked there. So we have the report and uh, here we have the good example of the report on observations and grading. So everything that was reported, getting the internal and external audits, the coppers that were initiated uh, and finalized, including the incident reports. So we have all the observations here. And once we are asked about the trend or about the statistics of what happens from the quality perspective in the company during the past year? What are the trends? Uh, maybe we had no critical or major observation this year, but here we have the statistics regarding the minor observations, and we can see the root cause, we can see the area of the observations. And it might happen so that there were lots of minor observations that can be combined into one major, if not worse. So that is why I believe that I I really like the report functionality and like Eugenia has something to add. I feel yeah. I, I wanted to to, to um, interrupt your love uh, with the with the reports uh, and just to check whether we haven't bored everyone to death. And uh, yeah, actually, by the way, we have uh, two questions in chat and two questions in Q and A um, section. But we'll we'll get back to those. Um, I think in just like five minutes because there's only a couple slides left uh, with Anna. But let's uh, make sure you all alive here and have a second poll. The last one that's the last questioning for today um so i'm launching the poll and the question is uh and you can choose multiple um options so what is the biggest obstacle for you to digitalize um, your quality management system because we remember that uh, most of you haven't uh, still haven't and I actually been chatting with the some of the clients um while anna was uh, talking and uh, yeah, they haven't. Uh, I know that they haven't. So go on with the answers. So the options are uh, electronic system don't fully fit or cover our processes, which is obviously not the case with Flex databases with our uh, completely configurable workflow that uh, fits the process as a glove. You don't need to make any changes to your processes, the system completely covers everything. Uh, another one, uh, not sure in the clinical uh, systems compliance. Fair enough, I think Anna can respond to that one. And too expensive, uh, I, can, I can relate, but typically our clients say uh, that our pricing is uh, at least fair. And too complicated, yeah. Well, thanks God we have Anna to walk us through everything as well as support the implementation and not enough time or resources. Um, yeah, well, I can relate to those the most, I guess. But again, with our implementation, that's quite quite easy, um, actually. So I think that everyone who wanted to share uh, already did. And I'll close the poll and we'll share the results uh, with you. So we can see that too expensive is 64% of people answered. 
that. Uh, some of them, they have others. So you can share it in chat uh, if you have any other obstacles that be interesting to have uh, an idea of uh, what else can that be. This is, this is the list that uh, we came up with uh, this morning. Okay, so I think that everyone's seen the results. Anna, did you, have you managed to read through? I'm kind of measuring whether it was enough time. Well, it seems that it was enough time, and in fact, it is quite an interesting statistics, like not enough time or resources and too expensive for the leading one. Well, as well as the system not fitting the processes, which is, again, uh, not a problem with us. Okay, so I think that uh, I'll let you have the floor again with just a couple slides left, mostly focused on the compliance part and stop sharing the results, okay? Okay, thank you, Evgenia. So, okay, like, in fact, we have some answers to those who is not sure either the system might be compliant or not. And, uh, by the way, I would take the chance to mention that you definitely know that the European Medicines Agency recently published the guideline on computerized systems and electronic data in clinical trials. In fact, I love this one very much. It is very well structured and, well, I can't buy it wait when it becomes effective. And uh, FDA, by the way, also published the new draft of questions and answers regarding the electronic systems and records and signatures. And um, I haven't thoroughly studied both documents. Again, we can confirm that we have the established and compliant software development processes, compliant even with the newly issued guideline. So uh, happy to say that, and uh, everything has been proven by successful audits and inspections that we have survived together with our clients. Uh, and also, like, it's really easy to digitalize your quality management system. It's going to take some time to switch from existing process to the new one, to pass all the trainings and to get used to the new system. But after that, you are happy to work with the new system and to have everything in one place. And be sure that uh, like sharing Flex Database's experience and experience of our clients, I can say that, uh, well, once we know the regulations and we have vast experience in digitalizing the processes for our clients, um, we can provide the full support for validation activities, for user acceptance testing, performance qualification as well. We provide all the necessary documents to our clients and keep supporting them after the implementation. So we are always here to help to provide assistance with some technical questions or with future audits and inspector instructions. So it's not that scary, in fact to have all in one place and to switch to computerized system to manage your quality management system processes and it will help a lot, in fact. So um, I believe that currently we are ready to switch the questions. Let me have a look uh, Amazing. at what we have. Yeah, we actually have a number. I would ask you to start with uh, Anastasia's questions in the chat and then one more also from the most engaged uh, participant in the Q&A section and uh, then we have some more. <laughs> well, let me read this one aloud. Like, uh, hi colleagues, could you please describe the process of documenting the root code for couple development and how you determine the date for corrective action and the date for preventive action? I believe it was quite quick in the video. Uh, maybe I can get back to the slide with the corrective and preventive action system. Uh, corrective and preventive action form, sorry. So, in fact, we, there are some fields. I'm not sure if I'm going to find them in the video quite quickly, but I'll try. So, there are several fields, the ones to generate the form and to capture the corrective and preventive actions. Like, Anastasia, 
maybe I will, you know, follow up separately after the webinar to show to you in the system how it all works. If I'm not, uh, you know, if I don't find it that easy in the video right now, not yeah, to... you can probably just uh, describe on which steps uh, we add the root cause analysis. Yeah, once we have all the corrective and preventive actions documented in the second module of the COPPA form, so we have the module three for accepting, for, so the form is signed to mark that all the actions planned are accepted. And after that, we have the two more modules to, first of all, track either all the corrective and preventive actions have been completed and the deadlines for that are definitely stated in the system. So um, maybe we have to, you know, to plan some separate demo of the system to show that to you. It is definitely here. Like you see, uh, we have the details for planned COP acceptance date and actual follow-up date and planned follow-up date. The same as all the details are to be entered into the system. So everything is captured and everything is tracked and tracked here in the system. As so, well as the root cause, but before the corrective and preventive actions, obviously. Exactly. Yep. And um, what is the next question? Uh, let me see. Does the copper reporting allow to filter the observation? based on GXP area, we're allowed to implement the internal customer classification. Well, it depends on how you configure your cup of form in the system. Once you enter the necessary information, you are able to filter using this very information. So the reports are configured as well as the templates are configured. If you need some specific information to be captured in the system and then tracked, like it's easily done and definitely it's not, you know, cut in stone. So everything is possible for sure. So the next question was actually from the anonymous attendee. Uh, which is, in addition to quality management system documents, can you manage study specific training in the system? Uh, for example, training on protocol, brochures, date management plans, etc., and subsequent updates to these items. I can address that. That's actually a part of the learning management system that we have that is completely works together with the quality management system and in the learning management system you can manage all of the trainings related to of course SOPs according to the uh, quality management system document metrics as well as training metrics uh, also available in the system and of course um, project related trainings that are managed at the same time by trainings and QA uh, employees, but also by the project manager. We have actually a separate interface for the project manager who can um, track all of these activities as well, because in the end of the day, the project manager uh, is responsible for everything in the project. Um, so yeah, I think we, we've answered, we've covered this one. And uh, we also had a comment from some of the clients who already digitalized. So Anna, I know who that was now. I will tell you later. Uh, thank you for, for joining today. And we have, um, I think the last one, but if, if you have more questions, oh, no, we have two more. Uh, so hi, is the COPPA module connected to the quality management system module so that COPPAs concerning SOPs are automatically assigned to the document. So our quality management uh, system is actually unified one, one place with just different workflows, whether it's incident, audits, quality management system documents, or COPPAs. So they are all obviously interconnected. So for example, incident uh, can then go into the COPPA mode if it's considered by the uh, QA um, potential COPPA and uh, things like that, as well as, of course, 
Kappa is interconnected with the SOPs. Uh, so, and the next one was so far you've covered the audit and couple processes of a quality management system. Um, Deborah was curious how we handle or have digitalized risk management, serious breach, and document management. So, document management can be uh, and is digitalized as well with a quality management system document, as long as we're talking about control documents uh, that are internal you know, for your company. If we're talking about the trial related documents, then the document management for that is covered in the trial master file or document management system. As to digitalizing risks, uh, in the system we have actually uh, risks are covered and digitalized in various parts of the system. If we're talking about uh, clinical operations, then on the level of some other modules of CTMS, we have um, site health assessments with risk indicators, to tolerance levels, etc. Within the QMS, obviously, we have all of the trackers that collect, for example, the observations that Anna mentioned, and you can build the trends on. Again, you have too many minor observations, but on the same topic, and there are uh, there can be triggers and notifications, um, things like that. So it depends on what exactly we are talking about because there's a lot of a lot of things in in the system and uh, what else i think we have the last one in the chat anna do you want to uh, take that one yeah i see the question from ivan uh, is it possible to create my own processes flow for incident management or for copper plan management definitely definitely it is possible to adjust the workflow according to your standard procedures. As it is uh, one of our main slogans that we are not adjusting our clients to our system, but vice versa. So for sure, all the templates, all the forms, all the workflows are configurable and we are ready to provide uh, assistance with that or to teach, to teach our clients how to do that. So like both ways are in fact, possible. Yeah, actually, during the typical implementation, uh, we train our clients um, how to work with the configurable workflows and trackers. You don't need to have a technical background to do that. So you can completely do it on your own. Of course, it is controlled, version control. You can obsolete the process and everything is tracked in the audit trail, all of the changes you implement. And obviously, the level of access to create uh, to perform this sort of changes uh, should be the highest, not like everybody can do that. And um, okay, so we have, I think, one more question from uh, Anastasia. Does the Kappa reporting allow to filter the observations based on GXP area or allow to implement the internal customer classification? Actually, yes, I, I can answer that. Uh, yes, and yes, this is a part of the baseline, um, very streamlined process that is available right now out of the box. Yeah. Anastasia, I think we should have a one on one uh, demo uh, because, uh, yeah, uh, especially I'm very sure that it's going to be it's going to be interesting for you. Uh, so I think we have more in the chat. Anna, do you want to, from Priscilla? In case of an inspection, how would it be the access to consider this activity? Uh, is it possible to give an access exclusive for it like viewer? Well, yes, it is. And uh, we have the auditors and inspectors access granted to the system. Well, it's part of the like, default baseline functionality for sure. And uh, only the end user, the regulated company, chooses um, what is granted access to. Like it, it's up to you to decide for sure. Yep. Perfect. So I'm checking. We haven't. Can you check with me, Anna, if we answered everything? I yeah, since there's did. no new questions, but the ones were very interesting. In fact, yeah. I enjoyed them. Yeah. 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 And we knew what to 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 answer, so that that is good because every time you like, oh my God, it's uh, <laughs> it's so scary. 
Okay, thank you so much, colleagues, for joining in. We will send um, the recording. Also, some of the colleagues ask for the presentation itself. We'll, we'll check uh, if it's not too heavy to send because there are videos. And but we'll absolutely hundred percent will send you the recording uh, of this webinar. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, okay, enjoy your evening. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.